Hello, 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 and welcome to a new video of this Dynamo course right here on Ball Brain. Hello, my name is Luisa Santamaria, and I'm an architect and BIM consultant based in Spain. How are you? So today I'm going to show you 10 Dynamo examples and I'm going straight to the point, straight to the meat. So let's get started. So these are dynamos that are not showy, they are not flashy, okay? They are dynamos that you would normally use on your firm on everyday basis so that you get a general idea of what you can use dynamo for. So first example would be managing parameters natively. So in this particular example, as you can see, um, in these rooms, we do not have a parameter here called parameter prueba or anything like that. You can see right here the parameters written in Spanish. The aim is to transfer the information from the rooms to this parameter called parameter prueba. And how do we do that? Well, first I'm creating the shared parameter, parameter prueba, and after that I'm including all this information, all this parameter information to this resize uh, parameter, first filtering the rooms, then listing the room parameters, um, the unique parameters, then choosing the parameters that I want to transfer. And after that, as you can see, I have right here all the information. And after that, just executing and including the information I want in this parameter. As you can see, right now I have the parameter and it's filled with information. Imagine all the information you can transmit from one parameter to another, from one category to another, just by using Dynamo. Okay, so this was the first example, I think the most used of them all. And I'm talking to you about databases because even if the example I'm going to show you will be about Excel, you can transport the information, you can get the information from many sorts of databases to Dynamo, for instance, CSV, in JSON, or you can also use Google Drive as your database, uh, any Google any Google Docs, any Google Sheet. Uh, you can transmit the information to your Revit mobile. So how do we do that? I'm going to show you an example. Right, so on this example, as you can see, I've got all this information the name and the number of the rooms. And what I want to do is just transmit the information from Revit to Excel and then back. So first I have here a switch, just true, false, where I'm importing or exporting, true for import, false for export. Right now I want to export, so I'm selecting false. I select the exportation file right here. And as I execute this information, right now you can see that my Excel is completely empty. So what I'm going to do is just uh, get the parameters I want and right here I'm using a data gate which is something that is used from Revit 2020 more or less. I'm getting all the parameters I want and as you can see as I execute the information is already included in Excel. But I'm not going to leave it like that. I also want to get information from Excel back to Revit. Well, as you can see, now I'm going to write some parameters right here at the comment section, like prueba, whatever. I'm saving this Excel file, okay, as importation, uh, import. Okay, and then I switch my, my switch <laughs> to true and execute it. And as you can see, the information is already filled up. So yeah, you can import and export information from different files, from different Excels to Revit on the opposite direction as well. Number three, managing use and their elements in Revit. This example I think is super juicy because in Revit views are a pain in the um, nose, <laughs> okay, to work with. So sheets, filtering, copying templates from one view to another. Yes, you can do all that. So I'm going to show you an example. 
Here, what I'm going to do is to transmit the filters from one view to another. So, right here, I've got the filters, the view filters, and as you can see, there are plenty. So, this Dynamo will do just that, just copying filters from one view to another. Right here, I've got the view, I got the filters it uses, I get the view filters, I see whether the <laughs> the view actually has or doesn't have a filter and after that, after considering where it does or doesn't have a filter what I will be doing is actually transporting uh, from one view to another, the filters from one view to another so I just have my views uh, down on the lower side, I open the data gate and I'm using a node which is copy all filters and that's it once I execute, the filters will get copied. If you have come this far and you find Dynamo interesting or an interesting topic to study, I suggest you to download our Dynamo guide, Ball Brain Dynamo guide that you will have right down on the video description. And I really hope you enjoyed it. Number four. Four is a number, numeral and digits. <laughs> According to Wikipedia, four is a number. Thank you so much, Google. I didn't know. Okay, number four, placing column finishes automatically. In this case, I'm going to show you what this Dynamo does, but I'm not going to show you exactly how it does it. Why? Because I want to include this exercise for my students as a challenge. And if I show this on a YouTube video, then they won't be facing a challenge, they will just copy. But even if you just see what this does, I think it will be interesting for you. I don't know whether you have faced this challenge. Trouble is, finishes don't join well. Um, normally, when you work with Revit, ones get all over the place. I'm showing the Dynamo right now, not really getting close. In, if you are my student, you will have to do this on your own. Um, ones get all over the place and so on. So I don't want to spoil it, so I'm going straight to get the Dynamo executed. And right here you can see the result. The finish is correctly placed. The finishing wall is correctly placed surrounding the column and behaving in the way it should. And even with different materials right here. If you have ever faced this challenge of modeling the finishes, the column finishes, I'm sure you will appreciate the beauty of this Dynamo because it is such a pain for such a simple task to be so difficult when using Revit. So I know that you appreciate it. So going straight to number five, changing the elements materials. What do we normally use it for? We use it for preparing the models for rendering because whoever is doing the images from a Revit models needs the model to have the materials on point, well distributed in their proper elements, in their proper types especially if you work with programs, with rendering programs such as Lumion or similar ones. Where else may we find these sort of dynamos for changing or swapping materials useful when working in disciplines such as MIP? I'm going to show you. So as you can see right now, we have here pipes with the materials polypropyleno and polypropyleno, multicapa, polyethylene and polypropylene. Polyethylene, polypropylene, polyethylene, and polypropylene, polypropylene, polypropylene. I don't know how it's called in English, all right? Um, so what we normally want is the pipes to change their materials from a certain diameter to another because of the regulations. And in this dynamo, what we are doing is selecting all the pipes, examining their diameter, comparing it with the regulation or the, the law in your country, in, right now we have it, I'm using it with the Spanish regulation and changing the materials automatically considering the diameter of these pipes. You may also want to use this for changing the material when outside or inside, but right here I'm just using it regarding the, the diameter of the pipes. So as you can see, once I execute it, I already have my materials controlled. So if you have this Dynamo at hand, what you may do is to 
model just focusing on getting the diameters right and then just swap the materials at the very end with this dynamo to ensure that you have everything according to the regulations. I think that if you work with plumbing, you will love this dynamo, <laughs> okay? If you're finding this information useful so far, please do subscribe to this channel. It helps us enormously and it tells the, as it tells the YouTube algorithm that you are liking our videos. Number six, automating quantity surveillance. Where measurements are concerned, Dynamo is really, really useful. I'm going to show you an example. What does the Kite Dynamo I'm currently showing do? Just by introducing a number, for each room, we do all this automatically. We number rooms, we introduce the finishes, get the measurements of the wall, roofs and ceiling finishes automatically. So consider all we can do where measurements and quantities are concerned just yes, with a single dynamo. And yes, if you're in case you're wondering, we can also remove the, the measurements of gaps such as doors and windows, and all these can be further developed. Okay, right, right here I'm showing you the measurements. Everything we can get just yes, from a single dynamo. And yes, if we ever do a dynamo course, it will be included in this course. And if we do, you'll be able to check it out right here. Number seven, automatic tagging. Tagging is one of the most painful jobs you can have where architecture is concerned. Why? Because we have dozens, if not hundreds of, of sheets, and we need to tag all the elements correctly. I know for a fact that this is also a pain in MIP, when, where you need to tag all the pipes and all the tags will get together in order so that your sheet can be viewed or reviewed by a human being. So how can we do this automatically? I'm going to show you an example right now. So as we can see, I'm introducing here a tag. This tag is supposed to get the information out of the rooms, but right now it does not, it doesn't read it. I'm going to include this information in my tag regarding I'm going to, to change some things on, on the rooms, some parameters right here, so that you may see that it changes. What does it do? It selects the rooms, it selects the parameters that I want to transmit to this tag. After that, I change some things so that the tag will look nicely, <laughs> okay? And at the end, I assign the parameter to this tag. So as I execute it, you can already see that the information has changed. If I, if I change the information of the room and execute again, my tag will change. No, it isn't magic, it's just Dynamo at work. You can also use these Dynamos in order to tag pipes on their drawings or when tagging legends. I know this is quite an issue, but it can be done using Dynamo. I'm going straight to the eighth one, eighth example, warning corrections. If you have come this far, it's time for you to confess. How many warnings did you get on your first Revit model? I think I reached close to 400 Revit warnings. No shame on it right now, okay? Um, what you normally do when you have your first Revit project is that you're working, you're looking straight, to your computer, you get a warning, you ignore it, and keep on working. What it actually, this allows, this normally results on the model packed with warnings, and if you aren't careful enough, the model may crash. So this is a big issue, especially if you're a BIM manager or a BIM leader. I'm going to show you an example. Okay. Uh, right here, as you can see, we have many, many drawings. So this Dynamo corrects the warning identical instances on the same place. Okay. And what it does is just changing the color of the elements which have a warning. You may erase them. Uh, right here with the exclusion, I just wanted the warnings to be to go straight to your eye in red color. But you could also just yes, erase them, delete them. 
Number nine, this ninth one, you will truly appreciate if you are a big manager. Why? Because coordination is so important when managing BIM on a project. The ninth one concerns coordinating the projects and the models and actually checking up whether everything is in its right place, both the information and the coordinates. With Dynamo you can check out whether elements and models are exactly placed where they should. You can even check whether all the models are on the same position and you can quickly change the model information easily. As you can see right here, we have the, pro the project information and what we are going to be doing is just transmitting this information to an Excel file with one click. As you can see right here, I have all the project information and as I execute my Dynamo, it changes as well. If I change everything in the Dynamo or other project, information will change. Last one, number 10, modeling complex geometry such as, and I will show you an example, this one. As you may notice, I'm not going to show you the dynamo for this one right here in this video. However, if you don't want to see how this dynamo, how the dynamo of this geometry, of this facade is drawn, you, you just have to go and check out this video right here where how to model this facade with dynamo is shown and you can also download our Dynamo guide below on the description section. I have included this Dynamo guide and you can obviously subscribe to this channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye bye!